Hi Jordan, uh, my question is, what is the antidote towards toxic masculinity? What precisely is toxic masculinity? As opposed to say toxic femininity or toxic humanity. What exactly are you asking me about? I really want to know what, what you like, uh, how you would describe to toxic masculinity. Because... No, I want you to define what to toxic masculinity constitutes. Since we're going to define things so carefully, let's do it. In this engaging discussion, Jordan Peterson confronts the concept of toxic masculinity during a public debate with a female audience member. Peterson challenges the term toxic masculinity, advocating instead for responsible masculinity, which he defines as honesty and responsibility in both speech and actions. Throughout the debate, he emphasizes the importance of individuals being accountable for themselves and contributing positively to their families and communities. The conversation takes a critical turn as Peterson presses his opponent to define toxic masculinity precisely, highlighting the difficulties in defining the term and questioning its validity compared to broader human behaviors that transcend gender. This intellectual exchange provides deep insights into Peterson's views on gender, responsibility, and societal norms. Hi, Jordan. Uh, my question is, what is the antidote towards toxic masculinity? Well, the, the antidote is responsible masculinity. And, and what does responsible mean? It means, well, if, if you're responsible, then you're trying, to do, um, you're trying to do what's honest first. So you're careful with your speech and your actions. You're careful with your speech in that you don't say things that you know to be false and you're careful in your actions so that you don't have to lie about what you do. That's a good start. And then the next thing would be that you're capable of taking responsibility for yourself at least so that once you're an adult, no one else has to bend over backwards to ensure that you don't unduly suffer in the world. And so that's responsibility for yourself. And then if you get halfway as good at that, well then, you know, you might think about taking on the responsibility of a family and contributing to your community and doing all those things in a harmonious manner. And that's obviously the antidote to toxic masculinity, which is not a phrase I would generally use. I just think about it as, you know, a, a, what would you call it? I think sinful behavior is a much more accurate representation personally, but it's honesty and, and responsibility. And I do think about it as a, harm, a function of harmony. Um, I said that didn't cover really a toxic masculinity, right? Because yes, it's you, de no, dealing, no, with the just, just, just dealing with the principle just, of reciprocity. No, you, you just said that you have to be honest and respons responsible as a man. Right? Well, put it this way. When I'm giving the spoon back to my granddaughter, I'm not engaging in toxic masculinity. And that was the point that I was trying to make is that and this deep reciprocity and trust is part of the social contract. And it is precisely the antidote to what precisely, since we're going to pursue this, what precisely is toxic masculinity? As opposed to say toxic femininity or toxic humanity. What exactly are you asking me about? I really want to know what, what you like, uh, how you would describe to toxic masculinity. Because... No, I want you to define what to toxic masculinity constitutes. Since we're going to define things so carefully, let's do it. I think that the, the moment when you kind of, um, I, I have a hard time to kind of describe it in English. Um, let's say, uh, gosh, um, that you kind of um, go over a boundary that kind of uh, neglect, neglects the freedom of the opposite, well, gender or whatsoever. So that's, that's mas toxic masculinity and that you kind of have But this... that would also be toxic feminine. Well, can, may, may I like finish my sentence? Sure. Please? Thank you. Um, and then also, um, you, I lost my sentence now, but uh, no, 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 I will be back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> but one sense that... Yeah, can someone help me here in the audience? Okay, so let before before we move on, let me point something out, you know, that I was willing to to undertake this uh, line of discussion, allowing for the possibility that the category of toxic masculinity had some content, right? But if we're, if we're going to pursue that line of reasoning and quibble about the answer, then we're certainly going to quibble about the definition that's embedded in the question. And so part of what's happened in our discourse is that we're required ethically 
to assume a priori merely out of politeness that the utterance toxic masculinity actually constitutes a meaningful phrase. And if you push it, you find very rapidly that it doesn't because it's very, very, very difficult to define and definitions actually matter. And so if it's a matter of transgressing against the boundaries of gender appropriate behavior, well, first of all, that indicates that there's something universal and normative about gender appropriate behavior, which is something that people who push the idea of toxic masculinity generally tend not to presume. And second, it's just as likely to happen among women as among men, in which case it's not toxic masculinity.